Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Um, I hope you guys have been doing okay through this pandemic. Uh, we've had a few weeks off just to get things, um, well, we've had several weeks off, to be honest. And uh, we're, but we're back now, back working, trying to get, uh, get everything done, keep on top of everything. And um, today we're, we're starting a, well, a, a partial house rewire. I say partial, it's already been started by somebody, but we're, um, we've come to take it over and finish it off. So just gonna have a quick look around and um, see what's, uh, what's been going on. But I've, I've had a quick look and I've, I've seen things like this. We got, looks like switch wires perhaps. I don't know. I don't, don't know if it's linked there so that it might indicate that's a feed but that's got a, a blue sleeve on, don't know why. And there's only, there's only one socket circuit in this place at the moment. And there's spear off the spear there, so I don't know what's actually, what's actually happening. So I need to look into this and look, see what's going on. So I said, some of these have been second fixed already. You've got a one mil cable there for some lighting underneath the fireplace, by the looks of it. But again, they're on a log burner here, so I don't think that's gonna be um, practical for where it's going. Might need some heat resistant um, cable there to, to put some, some form of lighting underneath there. And we've got the down lights. The down lights are missing, I believe. Just the drivers are up there, so we've got to get new down lights. I'll take you upstairs. Yeah, so, a lot of it's been done. The sheathing here, this is actually bent over. They've actually bent the sheathing over. It's cut short though. On there, the box is sunk in quite far. So yeah, it's, um, it's just like the upstairs lights, they're not wired yet. So we've got to wire those. Hopefully fish down the, the sheathing. Got a bit of second fixing to do. Yeah, I don't know if any of you lot have um, taken over a rewire before, but you've just got to and pick, and pick up where they've left it, you know? But then little things you don't like, what do you do with it? Rip it out and start again. Or make, make, make the best of what's already there. I really, really don't know. Because um, the thing is, you don't really want start ripping everything back out again. It's going to start costing the customer more money. But then again, look at this, look, this is, what's this? Yeah, so this goes up to that switch. See, that's not even in the wiring zone. Wow. Is it? No, it's not. Not at the moment. I mean, if there's a light switch going here, then that, that will be. I suppose there is a light switch going to be going there. So yeah, so once that's brought out and, and sheathed up straight in line with a light switch here, that will be fine. So we've got outside light there. And then the, again, another light switch. And they've done up, but they, I mean, the cables there need pulling beyond the sheathing up there, really. He hasn't even got any sleeving on here, James. No. On this one, no sleeving at all. Mm. But blue on the on the live conductors on there. So this is the mains. Got the cables coming through the wall there, and it looks like they just come into the bottom. So I don't know what they were thinking. Whether they were going to put some trunking down here and then across there. I don't know, but again, yeah, it's a PME system. The F is um, the F bar goes into the new side of the neutral there. Oh yes, and then the cables go back in, right back in through there into the kitchen here, and then sheaved up. 
So unless there's going to be sockets on this wall here, that's not going to be in a wiring zone. So we're going to have to, I'm going to have to look, see what's going on this wall and then see if we can put some sockets on here just so it covers that section. This switch here looks like it's on the wrong side. There, so we've got to move that over to this side. It looks like we've got a cooker socket going here and a cooker hood spur for the extractor fan, which is going here. So we have got a kitchen plan. This needs tidying up. They haven't bent the sheathing over here. So that needs doing a bit more sheathing on and this taken through the box and then through into here. Change that to a 35 because that's a 35 mil box. Just bring it out the same. I actually don't know what that's for. It's got a D in there, so it could be for a dishwasher. If that's the case, we might get rid of that and just run a ring circuit underneath and then just put a socket in the, in the unit next to the dishwasher. And then we need to wire these here then. Again, probably remove the spurs if, um, if they're just for appliances. We can get rid of those, we can just put the sockets in the, in the units. And then we've got a, that'll be for the extractor fan, the isolation switch with a switch there. We need to, um, we need to change that so we can um, put another box next to that for a spur to fuse the uh, extractor fan down to free amp. But this is the plan. This plan goes against this wall. So yeah, that's that plans for this wall here. So yeah, so you can see there is a dishwasher going there, down there, down there. And then you've got a fridge down there. And then you've got a boiler. A boiler going in that unit there. That's what the spurs are for. Okay. Right. Let me get my head around all this and then um, I'll catch you in a bit. Right, so first things first, we need to get a temperature socket in here then, yeah, to make everything safe or not, so that nothing's going to be accidentally turned off in here, yeah. So we need to strip this out, so get the tools off, mm -hmm. strip all this out, yeah, take all this out nice and easy, and come back with and then we can take the 2 from here, from 16 now, and put a double socket there. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's your first job. Right, now we've, um, now we've got a head round everything, we've, I think we've got, I think we know quite, I think we know what's going on around here. But we've got to put in cooker switch and obviously the, the spur for the extractor hood, which is going there. Assuming that's the, well, that's going to be the ring for it, kitchen ring. Kitchen ring's on a separate one. But down here, there was a, we've removed that now, the sheath in there covering three cables. And one was dishwasher, one was the boiler. Well, the dishwasher went down to here, down this box and through into here. There was a wash machine supply, a boiler supply, and the other part of the leg for the ring for the kitchen. And that came down there to the side of that box, all the way down to the floor. So that's no wiring zone. So we just removed that completely. Um, 
we don't need to run radials back to the fuse board for a dishwasher. We don't need to run a radial back from the fuse board, well, back to the fuse board for a single washing machine. I don't know why anyone would do that, but that's, that's what we just pulled that out. And what we're gonna do now instead is we've got one end of the ring there, which is going to that socket. We're gonna take this off the wall, so we don't need that. And the other leg goes down there, so we're just going to leave that as it is. We may take this off or just tap the sheathing up to the bottom of the box, because that's exposed there. And this leg of cable is going to come out. We're going to leave that coil down here, because that's going to do a socket in the unit there for a dishwasher and a socket in the unit for the washing machine that side. And then James has pulled a couple of cables down the corner of the here. Uh, so one of them is a ring, is it James, I think? One of these? Uh, what are you yes. doing? So one of these cables is one of the legs for the ring in the kitchen and the other one was the boiler feed. Boiler. So he's going to put the boiler feed in today. He's going to change these boxes to 35s. He's going to take that one off, put this into 35s because they're, they're so far back in the wall because these knockout boxes are supposed to finish flush with the plaster. And as you can see, the plaster is going to struggle and it's got nothing to work to here. So we're going to take these off, straighten the brick wall up a bit. Um, and he's going to put some 35 mils on there, bring the boiler feed into there, which will be a flex from there then up to about this height because the boiler's sitting there. So the reason why James has brought these down the corner, I didn't time to do this, he'd done this off his own back. So well done James, he's learning. <laughs> so yeah, so the boiler's going on here, so the boiler flue will obviously need to go out here. So if we brought cables down here, they'd be completely in the way of the, the flue, the fixings and everything. So it's best to keep away from that. And we stuck to the wiring zone in the corner. He's going to come across there now and feed the boiler spur and double socket. And then we're going to come back down there, leave a coil there then, which will go back to a socket for, for the uh, appliances. The water's black plastic, so there's no actual need or requirement to bomb that. And then uh, what's this cable here? Uh, that's the... Oh, that's the boiler. boiler, yeah. boiler yeah. Okay, so that can go through, but we need to do something with this. So we're going to leave these cables as is at the minute, yeah. but we've got to do something with this. I think there's two units going across this wall, um, but that's not in any zone, so I really don't know what to do at the minute. So we need to work out. That's zone supply to a boiler, yeah. Yeah, may as well keep that in. These down lights have been measured out in a funny way. Same gap there. So the gap between the two lights is the same from there to the wall. So there's no, the way it's been measured out, it hasn't put the equal spread of light around the room. They just divided the room up rather than measuring it for the, for the, the spread of light. In the same ways with the, um, this lounge here, they're doing exactly the same, but there's six in here. You don't really need six down lights in this lounge. Four would have been plenty, because you don't need the, the amount of light you do in the kitchen, but the holes are drilled and they're already fitted, the JCC V50s have already been fitted, they've just been unplugged and taken, so we've got to buy new V50s just to plug in to the existing transformers here. James has put in a temporary supply look for us, so he's disconnected all these cables, first things first, we don't know this installation, we don't know where the cables run, we don't know nothing until we start digging, so the easiest safest thing to do is to disconnect everything that was being put in here temporarily and put our own temporary socket in that we know is safe to use um, and we know what's live then so nothing else in this property is live only this socket and he's put that on a 16 amp RCBO as that was in there already it's not labeled it's only a little temporary uh, socket while we're working here so this cable here is the end of line of the the current radial circuit for upstairs sockets. I don't know what's happening here, but the downstairs sockets um, have been wired in a radial, not a ring. And it says downstairs ring on the cable, but it's, it's actually, in actual fact, it's the radial. And I found the end line downstairs, that's in the lounge. They've got an upstairs ring, which also isn't a ring, because there's only one cable at the fuse board. And this is the this is the end line to the radial circuit here on this drum. So whether or not they were planning on putting a socket around here for the last last leg, I don't know. Uh, there's nothing round in this area unless they put in a um, 
unless they plan to pull a wardrobe or something across there. So I bet it's for a socket over there. So I've got to ask that question if they want a socket over in that corner or whichever or two more or whatever. We'll get that in and then that finish completes this radial up here and we'll just tidy up the sheathing, probably put new pieces on, extend them right into the floor. Because that, I mean, my guess is this, the um, skirting was probably on before and that's as low as it could go. And someone's obviously pulled the skirting off. But if you can, if you can always clear away behind the skirting and push the sheathing down as far as you can into the floor, it just gives that additional protection behind the skirting and also makes it easier when, um, if ever you've got to pull cables in and out of this, this sheathing here at a later date. Take me home. Navigating to home. That's American. <laughs> Who's that? Navigating to Mate, home. That's a different voice every time I talk to it. Right, guys. That's it for today. We've done. We've got a few bits done. We've managed to get our head round the installation of what somebody else has already done. And we've pulled some cables out that we weren't too happy with and we've made a few alterations which is good and I've made a big list for all the bits we need. So I think that's it for today. We're back there tomorrow afternoon after a couple of jobs so I'll get a, um, a bit more footage tomorrow and may even put that in a separate video. Like, subscribe. Remember to like, subscribe and see you next video.